This project came about because when I was in South Africa the first time I went there, I was met at the airport by this choir singing. My heart was immediately touched. And so I asked, from where did this school come? And they told me in an area called Kailicha. And it was a Masaili school. They were living in the most primitive conditions in which I have ever seen myself in my life. And I thought, these children deserve a chance. We're going to try to arrange that some of the students who really work hard and who are dedicated, we're going to try to arrange for some of you, if you want to, to maybe come to America and go to school for one year in America. Would some of you like to do that, do you think? Yes. And I thought, what a, there couldn't be a better place than to bring them to Iowa. And so Simon said, Erdine, why don't you check about it and see if we can do this? And so when I came back, I got on the phone calling different organizations trying to find out how do you bring students over from another country. Because I got a call from Erdine one day saying that I've got a responsibility or a job for you that you can't refuse. And uh, I said, Erdine, uh, tell me about it. She said, well. We had to figure out how we were going to do it. So a committee was formed to um, brainstorm on how to do this. This had never been done before. If you've worked with Erdine, you know that she, uh, you can't, it's difficult to say no to her. Finally got everything going. It, it took three years. It took three years to get this going. If they don't show up, this will be the biggest practical joke in <laughs> history. Uh, you know they're going to show up. We are all on the plane. We are on our way. Until I see the whites of their eyes, though. That's them. That's their you're coming as ambassadors from Africa, and we both have something to share. I don't know what it's going to be like, but I'm looking forward to the exchange of cultures. Let's see if we can't just impart a little bit about what we're about, what Iowa's about, what Americans are about. Simon 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 their life. It's part of their life. So we're happy to have them. Oh, Simon, sorry he couldn't be here, but I'll try and do what I can do. Please. Okay. I went to various churches and spoke uh, to see if we could get homes for the children. And I had to do all of this before we could say yes, they could come over. We had to have host families for them for a whole year. And then we met with these families to see this is going to be a whole year of school. You are going to be their mother and dad now. Can you do this? And the uh, response was overwhelming. Yes, we want to do this. They're all singing and they're on their way here.
all for being here tonight. I must say that um, it's so good to look out and see you all. This is a very special moment for me. Yes, we're looking forward to a year with these two girls. We will probably learn a lot more than the girls will. There is a, a tremendous, a tremendously special character here of this project because of the, the lack of means of the students, the number of students coming from one place, the number of them coming into a locale where they would have to be supported by the host families and the schools and, and the others that are providing the needs and necessities of life for them. I think those aspects of this project are highly unique. We didn't realize the extent of the financial commitment. Sure, we put together an initial budget and we're talking in terms of, of $70,000 or $80,000 that we would need to obtain to to buy medical insurance, to bring them over here, whatever. We then went to the community and the community responded really very well in terms of asking for contributions to try to support these youngsters. The different Rotary Clubs really pitched in and, and uh, each Rotary Club uh, made contributions to this overall effort. Rotary International believes that we can make this world a better place and we can make it a better place by making the world a smaller place by understanding different cultures by understanding different people but that's what i want to talk to you about nothing uh, everybody that came to the committee had uh, something to offer well, why don't we get started the committee's mixed black and white so it was a great mix of cultures and ideas and backgrounds and professions. So although there were differing points of view, uh, there was always, I think, great civility and uh, a mutual respect by the committee members and a mutual appreciation for what each and uh, all of them were giving. Most members of the committee kind of questioned their sanity <laughs> from time to time. But I think all members of the committee accepted it as a challenge. When we were told It'll never work. We found a way for it to work. And so I'm pleased as governor of Iowa to welcome you here. I think you'll find Iowans to be some of the nicest and friendliest people you meet. And if they're not, I want you to let me know. <laughs> and uh, I certainly hope that you get a chance to spend some time at the state fair here in the next 10 days. So on behalf of all of the people of Iowa, I want to warmly welcome you and say how excited we are to have you here and we hope that it is a both educational and enjoyable stay for you. Thank you very much. first thing when the kids got here, we identified, we knew that they were going to have to have the immunizations. 
our Polk County Health Department and Dr. Connor uh, really kind of took over the problem of the medical attention, the primary medical attention of these youngsters. We worked out a schedule uh, whereby um, the youngsters would be seen at the Broadlands Dental Clinic on a Saturday morning and then they would come to the Polk County Health Department on the Saturday afternoon and uh, we were able then to uh, go through the uh, the physical examination process. It took us all day to do it, but it was but it was well it was well worth the effort. Several of them tested positive for tuberculosis because tuberculosis. Many of their family members had it, so they would test positive. They were not active. None of them were active, but 36 out of 40 tested positive for tuberculosis. So. It required medication so that they would not become active. Those types of things we didn't think about. Bye now, no. Yes, have a good day at school. I'll see you okay. after. Bye. She'll have a uh, a day similar to any new student's first day at school. They told me in an area called Kailicha, and it was a Masili school. They were living in the most primitive conditions in which I have ever seen myself in my life. And I thought, these children deserve a chance. We're going to try to arrange that some of the students... I said, Erdine, uh, tell me about it. She said, well... We had to figure out how we were going to do it, so a committee was formed to um, brainstorm on how to do this. This had never been done before. If you've worked with Erdine, you know that she... Uh, you can't, it's difficult to say no to her. Check about it and see if we can do this. And so when I came back, I got on the phone calling different organizations trying to find out how do you bring students over from another country. Because I got a call from her dean one day saying that I've got a responsibility or a job for you that you can't refuse. And uh... this project came about because when I was in South Africa the first time I went there, I was met at the airport by this choir singing. My heart was immediately touched. And so I asked, from where did this school come? Who really work hard and who are dedicated, we're going to try to arrange for some of you, if you want to, to maybe come to America and go to school for one year in America. Would some of you like to do that, you think? Yes. And I thought, what a there couldn't be a better place than to bring them to Iowa. And so Simon said, Erdine, why don't you check